Hey, let's model this part in Fusion 360. And if you're curious, uh, this was a hose exhaust part that I had to design and 3D print for a part of my enclosure. Check out that other video if you're curious the how and the why. So modeling this part in Fusion 360, it's got a few little gotchas. So let's talk about some of the strategies. So in breaking it apart, it looks like it's going to be an extrude with some holes in that green area, a simple extruded pipe with a hole and then a sweep and then another extrude. A few key things in the design. I wanna have a nice perpendicular turn so that it's running straight down. Uh, this actually butts up to my back wall, and so we wanna make sure it fits. As well as this diameter here is critical for the design for the fit, for the hose to go on. Let's run through it in Fusion 360. We're in a new part file. I'm gonna make sure that my units are set to millimeter. I'm going to start a new sketch and I'm going to do the top plane. I'm going to use the origin in the center of my holes. I'll sketch a rectangle but this is corner to corner and I'd rather use the fancy center rectangle. That allows me to keep the origin in the middle. So as I'm dragging this out notice that if I hit the tab on the keyboard it allows me to toggle between the two dimensions before I place it and I know that this is 63 by 63.5. Now, why would you put the dimensions in over just making them equal? Well, if you know you're gonna change one and it's not always square, then I'd add both dimensions and then either use a parameter later or you can always come back, delete it, and make them equal. Next thing we need to do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the holes in since I, I don't expect there to be any conflict in the future and I can go ahead and put them in. Now there's a lot of great ways to drop in four holes. You can sketch another rectangle kind of as a guiding rectangle and you can select it and hit X on the keyboard for construction or right click and choose normal construction. Now just a simple dimension. I know that this is 50 and that both sides are square. So I'll make them equal. I want to make sure that the corners align to the construction lines. That looks really good. Still moving and this can be kind of quirky. So I'll select the endpoint and hold control or command and then choose the constraint of coincident. Now it's locked in much better. It does not drag away. Okay, that's much better. So I'm gonna sketch four holes. Same thing, select all four holding command or shift or control, right click and make them equal. One dimension, D for dimension and those holes, the holes are four millimeters. Now let's extrude the plate. We'll leave those holes off. I know the depth to be four millimeters. Can type it in the dialog here, hit enter. We have that plate and now what we want to do, now what about the hole in the middle? Now how do you get back? You right click on the sketch in the timeline, choose edit sketch and we're going to grab a circle and we're going to sketch it right at the center and we'll add a smart dimension right in the middle there. And this hole should be 42 throughout. If we hit okay, the thing is the extrude doesn't really know that we just changed it. And sometimes you have to go back in and clear that out. So we've got the four holes plus the center hole. Terrific. All right, so next let's start a sketch on this face, do sketch, and we can offset this circle so we could recreate the same one as well as just sketching another circle. Because it's so simple, it's gonna achieve the same thing when I do a dimension between them. That's the equivalent of doing a sketch offset. Okay, so now that we have the sketch circle, if I select the circle, all right, now if you ever wanna measure, just click the entity itself, you'll find the measurement down in the bottom. We're gonna hit extrude. And it does recognize that auto project happened for that inner line and the outer line. So we're getting that extrusion how we want it. And our value of 15, from the bottom face here to the top. It's roughly 15 that I've measured, looks great. So now for a little bit tricky part, the sweep. The sweep always has two things. It's got the profile and the path that it follows. Let's check it out. Now, this is a slightly easy one. We can reuse this exact same profile when we're going to sweep it. 
If you hover through your planes, you can right click on a plane and choose to create a sketch right on a plane. That allows you not having to select it out in the browser if you're needing to, if you've got a lot going on. All right, so what I wanna sketch is an arc. I'll just do a search for arc with S key. And what I wanna do is sketch an arc from this endpoint or kind of the bottom edge. And I'm gonna come out and what we want to do is we want to create, I want to create a nice tangency or a nice smooth transition. And I want to ensure that this is fully made the turn and fully perpendicular uh, to this face once it's terminated or once it's finishing. Now I know kind of measuring it out, it's somewhere in the like 13 or so radius for recreating it. Now I'd like to create tangency. So if the edge will not wake up, you can use project. I'll hit P for project and the edge is not waking up. So you can actually select the body itself. And now you'll notice once you hit okay, is this is now a usable reference geometry. So anytime you've got kind of an edge that you wanna reuse, think about using project. So I select this line and this arc, and I'm gonna to choose to make them create a smooth transition with tangent. That looks better. Now, one thing I can do is I have this center point and I can make sure that it's always vertical or that it lines up and is terminating, but I wanna make sure this makes the full transition. So one thing I might wanna do is actually just overextend it and then cut it back just to make sure that it's fully terminating and ready. All right, so if I wanna add dimensions or constraints, sometimes it's easier to add those construction lines and finish that out. Uh, sometimes fusion is difficult to get these dimensions from point to point in the horizontal. Now let's try it out. So what we'll do is finish out the sketch. I'll use search and look for sweep. And we wanna do a regular sweep, a feature sweep, not the orange one, but the blue one, cause it's solid. I'm gonna select the profile or the solid face here. And the path will be that little arc that we drew. Hey, so I did something wrong. I actually didn't draw a solid line for that path. So let's go back and fix that. Editing the sketch, I'm gonna select it, hit X, turn it into solid, finish the sketch. And now we'll try that sweep. This profile following this path. Okay, so you can see that nice extension there, but it is overextending and that's okay. What I wanna do now is join that in. So this is all one and we'll come in from the side or from that plane. So if you wanna use maybe the XZ plane in this example, right click, edit sketch, excuse me, create sketch. I'll zoom to fit with F on the keyboard. F is in fit. And what I'm gonna do is sketch a line going up and that's gonna be my cutter. Now I'm gonna right click on the line, make sure that it's vertical, perfect. And now I'm going to hit extrude, E for extrude. I'll use the thin extrude and I'm gonna select this line. Now, what we wanna do is a distance all the way through both sides. So I can actually do two sides or symmetric and it's cutting both sides. And you'll notice all I did was draw a line. And now what about the thickness? The thickness matters. So one, can we try to do it at zero? So the thin command does not like that. Now what's exciting or what's great is we can actually make this thick and it doesn't hurt anything, it's cutting everything to this side. And that's the wall location. So if I do it the other way, it's gonna cut the other direction. So we've got a lot of nice control. It's kind of cool that you don't have to finish that sketch rectangle. So we slice that off, that looks great. And there's a really easy way to go ahead and extrude a face. Just hit E for extrude and select the face and it's adding an additional extrude. Now, what about the depth? How far does this go? I'm measuring it like 63 and a half. Okay, so what were some of the gotchas? What were some of the important points here? I would call out that this first sketch is really critical, just being able to put all those holes together. Now, 
this is starting to get a little bit heavy, so maybe it'd be easier to separate it into two sketches and, and separate features, but this is still very manageable and editable. It's all one location I can go and manipulate this, make it larger. Now this hole I learned once I 3D printed, I probably should have made it larger um, and it's something I can explore maybe in the second iteration. Then a simple extrude going up. The sweep is a little bit tricky. I reused the face here and used an arc from the bottom. Now one thing I, in playing with the design a few times, I was finding that um, it wasn't fully extending and so then I would be coming off at an angle. So because I need this to be perfectly perpendicular to how this is coming in the inlet, so I've got nice clearance, I wanted to make sure that this extended well past and then I cut it back so that it's perfectly flat and then extrude it. Hey, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.